All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty the Mirror, Search for a Huru. And tonight I have a special guest. He's no stranger to Search for a Huru. It's Brother Bomani Tahimba. And tonight's topic is what's going on in the Dominican Republic has nothing to do with Africa. Again, there's no connection uh, what's going on with the Dominican Republic with Africa. For some reason, you know, some, I, I don't know why people are even correlating, you know, what's going on with the Dominican Republic with Africa. Because I'm guessing the, and, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Bomani, since people already have this conception that Africa is just dangerous. So since the Dominican Republic, people are dying from um, bootleg liquor, they think it's probably just out of control in Africa now. Is that is that where you're getting Dominic, uh, the Bomani, Brother Bomani? Uh, what I'm getting is, uh, is you know, you just hear these stories of uh, folks going off into different parts of the Caribbean. Uh, that's what I've heard, uh, mainly Dominican Republic and a few other islands. And, um, you know, so, you know, when anything happened, you know, with black folks in black countries, you know, automatically, you know, there, there's a fear of Africa, even if it's not in Africa or a fear of black folks. Uh, but I'm always here to, you know, tell, uh, tell our brothers and sisters that the African continent has been the safest continent I've ever traveled to out of Me too. continents. And uh, countries like Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, peaceful, and Togo, Benin, no drama. And, uh, you know, these are things that are not, are not us as a people, you know. When you think about, when you list the different crimes that goes on in the countries, like, you know, like you've been to Senegal a lot, and uh, and I've mm -hmm. been there during my first uh, set of years going, uh, and then I've been to Ghana, and then the things you hear reported as crime, and then when you come back here, and you, you know, you turn on, you know, whether you go on YouTube or TV, and it's, it's no level of comparison. Um, the crimes that you usually hear about that goes on in West Africa is just petty crimes. Uh, the things that goes on in other places are straight hardcore felony. Uh, right. So, you know, so I tend to, you know, when people ask me where I'm going, it's always to Africa. Uh, and I tell people that's where I feel the safest at. I've been to countries like the Dominican Republic and I can see how things go wrong quick. You know, number one, the hate energy is there already from this, uh, you know, the, the, the bastard energy of the Spaniards. You know, uh, whether, you know, whether it's a majority or, or less than a majority of people mixed with that uh, evilness. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you're talking about a country that's been propped up, uh, you know, propped up by, you know, one of the wickedest oppressors to, you know, to get our, to, to mix our people in a way where it creates a level of this hate and, you know, hate, hate from this, from different shades of color. So you're dealing with colorism and racism and just the hate of dark skinned people. You know, when you go into some of these countries, especially some of these Spanish-speaking countries, uh, and you know, and you know, even when I was in Brazil, you can you can you can feel that tension. Uh, oh, okay, you brought up Brazil. Now, where did where did you go in Brazil? I went to Rio de Janeiro and Salvador de Bahia. Because you know, Brazil is the uh, sex, the black man sex tourism capital of the planet, and they make it seem as if. You know, if you walk around Rio de Janeiro, you were a god. So, how was your experience in um uh, in uh, Rio? You know, I, I love the energy in Brazil in general. Uh, but what I'm also saying to folks, uh, I mean, it's a nice place to go, chill, enjoy the roots, the culture. You know, it's you know, it's a part of our history as a people, uh, and a very big part of it. Uh, but at the same time, too, when you know, when you go into some of these countries, you know, you know, the foundation of hatred towards us is dark skinned black melanated people has been rooted uh, and it's probably rooted everywhere else also, but it's like a modern day situation, you know? So, you know, at the same time too, you know, we just have to be careful as far as, uh, you know, people, you know, wherever you go, if you're, you're a tourist, you know, you're, you know, you're subject to being targeted. Uh, but there's two different level of targeting. There, there's one level of targeting where I might be in Ghana, where I'm being charged maybe a few, a few cents more for something. Yeah. And in uh, Ghana, it, it's, 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 and then it's, like, when you're in like a, uh, one of these Spanish-speaking countries where people are looking to kidnap you, rob you, beat you, hurt you, and you know, literally just end your life, you know. So it's like that's a level of comparison that people see because sometimes people don't, you know, they hear things and they don't, they don't analyze it. But being around the different parts of the world, you and I can kind of put this thing together. I was saying in in Ghana, it's not a, a few pennies. They try those street vendors try to 
uh, rape you. <laughs> Shit. But no one's trying to take your life, dude. This fella may charge you a little extra because you got that tourist smile. <laughs> yeah, a extra. A lot extra. <laughs> so, how, so, so you've been to Dominican. How was your experience in uh, Dominican? You know, I'm one of those guys, you know, from, from the streets that you know, I make my way around sometimes, most of the time not in groups, but in, in, in times when I work for the airlines and when I just, you know, want to take a vacation or just get get away from this, you know, sometimes you just got to get away from here and you just, you just, you know, you, you know, you're right there by land airport, you get on a jet plane and you just go somewhere and you just like get away and you just kick back and just, you know, refocus. Uh, so for myself, I mean, it was good. It, 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 I, I felt fine and safe. You know, I have my translator and everything and you know, naturally, I'm, I'm one of the persons going to be drawn to, you know, our brothers from Haiti. So, you know, so I connected with uh, a few Haitians and you know, I connected in the country. And I, you know, I just enjoyed this a regular just getaway, uh, hanging out at the beach, uh, social nightlife and so on. Um, but at the same time, too, you know, you know, you have to just always keep in mind that you're somewhere where you don't speak the language. And at any moment, you know, someone can try to set you up, whether you're flashy or not. But at the same time, too, what you really want to do, you want to kind of blend in as best as possible. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be looking flashy with, you know, change watches and you don't want to be pulling out money and, you know, you don't want to be acting a certain way. Uh, so those are some of the ways, that, you know, where I see that you have less issue. But and the main thing is um, ever since I started traveling in the, in the military, we always travel as a unit, um, you know, and that is bit, that's like usually the safest practice. Uh, so the, the groups that uh, you and I do, uh, that tend to be the safest way people are safe getting in and out of countries. But at the same time, too, we don't we understand that not everybody's going to go with a group. So they just have to basically just try to blend in. And then one of the best thing is to connect with somebody that's local that you already know already or, or you know, or like how you do it. You know, you get referrals or recommendations from people and, you know, and then, you know, folks just connect you more like a family energy and they're going to look out for you. Mm, let's see what we got here in the chat room. That so room. <laughs> would, you, would you advise people to go to Dominican Republic? Me personally, not at all. I, I would advise them to come to you know, countries like uh Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, you know, Kenya, Tanzania, you know, countries where you're going to get number love and where, you know, that's your people there and your people, you know, and you can actually connect to something. Uh, you know, when you go to a country like uh, Dominican Republic, it's, you know, it's a tourist country, though. The nice beaches, beautiful women, nice parties and things like that. But at the same time, and then uh, fake uh, Spanish history. Um, but right. beyond that, is uh, it, you know, it's not much more than that. If you're trying to get a piece of like, you know, of that and a lot more, you know, the countries I just named is perfect because you can build a future, you can connect into the country and then, you know, you don't have to go a whole hop and you can actually go there and actually find you a, a cultural wife. That's, you know, mm. you know and, you know, you, you, you can actually build something. So that's why I'm explaining to people the difference between going to like Africa, Africa and going to like Brazil and the Dominican Republic. You know? somebody, somebody in the chat room is asking, why don't you go to uh, Ethiopia anymore? Um, I did one trip to, you know, you know, there's a, you, you know, at the same, at the end of the day, you want to go to all parts of Africa, but you know, you have a business to run, you got bills to pay, child to take care of, uh, investments to make and things like that. So you got to keep on rolling with what works. So Ghana's one of the product that works, South Africa, I'm building that relationship. And, um, you know, all those itinerary, Ethiopia, Senegal, I got those itinerary, but don't have enough people interested in going to Africa to really do a bunch of tours. But at the same time too, that's the goal. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else we have here in the in the chat room. Well, let me if you it's so hard. OK, so Bomani, the people who say that. You know, you don't have to go all the way to Africa to experience African culture because you have black countries, Jamaica, Haiti, um, you know, pretty much the Caribbean uh here on this side of the uh of the world what, what would be your uh response to that yeah um, you know countries yeah, like, you need to experience the caribbean first before you go to africa what would be your response to that i would say um you know there's there's no sequence and steps in doing these uh you know just like when i first started doing tours i just went out and did these big tours to, to africa uh it was never let me just do some tours to the caribbean or do some tours to florida you know, you know, you know, people always want to make it seem like you just like compare everything to, to being a, a baby and taking and, you know, you don't have to do that. Um, you can, you know, most of the people that travel with me, they've never been anywhere outside of the, the outside of America. And then mm -hmm. the place they're going is, you know, it's, uh, Ghana with me. Uh, and, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it's nice if you've been to 
different parts of the Caribbean before, it'll definitely get you prepared. I mean, me being born in Jamaica got me a whole lot prepared to, for Ghana. I just really felt like I was home, you know, the Jamaica of Africa. Uh, so that can be, you know, very beneficial uh, to a point. And the same thing Amicus explained to me when she was looking to, to to leave America. She went, you know, she went to Jamaica first, and and then when she when she went to Ghana, that was like a complete package. Uh, ya Ankara Anka says, laugh out loud. I'm Jamaica. Jamaica is not Africanized anymore. This, you know, the, the, what they're saying is the Chinese have pretty pretty much own Jamaica now. Is that true? Um, yes, yeah, as, as time goes along, more and more of these uh, small uh, countries, small islands are going to be take over by, taken over by uh, European and Asian powers as far as this economy itself. But, um, you know, so people lose their culture because you have more foreign stuff coming in. But at the same time, to, if you're born in that culture and that era, it, it, uh, it's, it gives you, it, it, it's, a, it's a closer connection to Africa than if I was born in America, um, you know, without sounding strange or, you know, or funny to anybody. Uh, so, um, you know, a lot has changed since then, um, but uh, at the same time, too, the best thing now is for folks is to look to the African continent and for us to put our resources together, energy together. And mm -hmm. as you see with the Ghana government, and uh, they've been going around different parts of the Caribbean, and they've been, you know, re-emphasizing that, uh, that, uh, you know, that the agreements, they have always had bilateral agreements where you can travel from the Caribbean to the African continent, uh, various countries, uh, without any visas and everything. So, and, and you know, those diplomatic uh, missions, those, those are helping and, and, and it also helped people who, uh, you know, you, know you, have, you have a lot of people in the Caribbean that want to go to the African continent because people communicate with me, ask me about visas, transit visas, saying they can't get paperwork to go to Europe or America. So there's no way for them to get to Africa. Uh, so, you know, all those things, you know, are different things that are, that are helping. Let's see what else we have here in the uh, in the chat room. Everyone, thank you for joining. Make sure you hit that like button as you come to the chat room. Please hit that like button. Really appreciate it. It's free. So hit that um, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Everybody hit that like button. Now, now, now Bomani, you mentioned the um, how Jamaica has a reciprocal, I guess, agreement with Ghana in regards to Jamaicans don't have to pay for a visa and got names don't have to pay a visa to come to go to jamaica is there a way where ghana could implement the same i guess uh program for black americans or does it have to would it have to be for all americans um it's probably impossible in, in both situations for them to do that um um, they, we are, we're, and I know when we hear these things that the folks in the Caribbean are getting, we're like, what about us? What about us? But uh, the situation of folks in the Caribbean is always going to be different as far as uh, the finance and the, the, the average salary and those situations. But beyond that, the direct uh, situation is 100 people, Ghanaian citizens could be lined up outside the American embassy and literally maybe five to 10 uh, get a visa and then they all have to pay 150 and then regardless if you get it or not, uh, the, the money is taken. Myself and others. It's like that. It's like that in Nigeria. Like it's crazy. Like it's crazy. They don't get the money back. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, the, you know, so these countries are pissed off from that situation. But at the same time, too, uh, America is going to say that they can't allow so many people in and, you know, all that political stuff. But nevertheless, uh, that alone right there makes it hard because they're looking at that situation i've had so many people complain like they did, every time i go up, they just take my money and 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 then nothing nothing uh so that 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 situation alone is going to cause that to almost never happen unless america turn around and be a little more respectful for black folks from ghana who want to come to america uh, so we as black people have to suffer for the, for these ignorant folks here and it, it would be nice if something special was organized but that's what citizenship is for right for those of us who can get it what let me ask this what is the process as far as a jamaican wanting to get uh, a visa to come to america i thought it would be pretty easy if this is a caribbean country um <laughs> it's sometimes it's, it's the luck of uh the role and sometimes it's how you can build your connection you know some people have better connections in america so that always help and it's mm -hmm. like not much of anybody and you know some people you know work it out through to to scholarship um um work it through the, but it's, it's still a situation where you you got a small i don't know the exact numbers but you have a small percentage of people who get visas and sometimes it's not a visa where you can stay you know 
Uh, so uh, it's um, it's just one of those things where America look at it as everybody want to come to America, so they have to have their restrictions, or else uh, you know we we'll take over. <laughs> you know, my folks from the Caribbean once you get enough of us here, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're just looking to take over, but you know, they, they, you know, just you know, same as the limitation from folks from Africa, because the ones of us that are coming are very just like just hungry for opportunity. So, but and but nevertheless, so that's that's the restriction, and that's why I always say that the best thing that we can do is make things better in the country that we're from as a people and invite yeah. black people from Europe and America and say, hey, come to the Caribbean, come to Africa, and let's build something as black people. You're here with your own people. Let's do something. It's not as simple as that, but you know, that's what Angla pushed because you know, some you know, some folks who just you know be trying to get to America for for, for the rest of their lives uh in different uh you know different countries outside of America instead yeah. of trying to see what they can put together and work on. And you know, some people get lucky and some people just die trying. Uh, somebody in the chat room said the truth is that Africa isn't really free. For some reason, we still rely on the on the colonizers to drive our government. I mean, just look at the Francophone countries. Their country is controlled by France. Now, this whole argument uh, that Africa is still controlled by Europe and the Chinese are taking over. That's why we shouldn't even we shouldn't waste our time with Africa. Uh, when people make statements like that, what do you what are your response to it? I just look at them as a coward uh, because okay. we have had a hundred years, hundred. We have had a lot more than that, but we have had a good one hundred twenty years where America has received the best set of black people from all over the world here, and you know we know and some of the greatest minds um, here, and and you know I feel, feel that you know we have you know we have had the best chances to do something and develop something with it. Uh, we have had other groups of people now coming in, especially like the different facets of uh, Asian groups coming in and they're just like dominating economics and dominating the neighborhood that, you know, and doing business and doing things that we should be doing and also dominating yeah. the, the, the African countries and the Caribbean countries and, and things like that. Um, but it's, but uh, I feel like right now in a situation like what I push repatriation, this allows us to get some of the best minds in, in African continent to work with the best minds there to develop what we need as a people for ourselves. That way we can be you know, more accommodating to the rest of our people around the world. Uh, I mean, it's a shame when you go, when you travel around the world and you go to different countries, you know, I want to come to America, I want to come to America. Everything's about coming to America, Europe. You know, and, uh, and it's, you know, like I say, it's heartbreaking because so, so many people are not going to be able to live those dreams. And so many people, you know, waste that $150 US dollar to apply for that visa. And some people are going to apply a few times. We multiply that times all, you know, on other people and put it together. You know, you you, know, you, you start investing in your own country little by little. You're growing. And as a matter of fact, Ghana is growing because I remember the last 15 years as being here in America and being here in Ghana, I've seen the steady growth in Ghana. And I've seen not yeah. in America, I've seen this America kind of stabilize. But at the same time, too, some growth in America, but the decline in America I saw was us. us the was black people. Down. Exactly. Exactly. Because yeah, I remember one point for a very short period of time, some of us was getting some good jobs here <laughs> and making some real and doing and getting some real good careers. Uh, but now, like I was saying, with the influx of other, um, you know, other uh, of, of foreigners like from the Asian countries and European countries, you know, and, and definitely, you know, you have a large group of Indians con consistently coming over. Jobs that a lot of us used to work with. People talk about some of these fake ex uh, fake Hispanics, but even that situation. So we as a, you know, we as dark black skin, melanated African people are getting pushed out to the point where I've gotten so many calls about gentrification, people from Toronto all the way down to the different parts of, you know, major cities in the US and folk, you know, cause folks see Garvey town and they're, 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 they're asking that this is an opportunity to get away from the madness like that. And I was telling them, absolutely. That's why opportunities like that were, were created. Um, and we as a people, we're beginning to see America less and less of our home. And as our population gets smaller and smaller because of the influx of so much other people, and then the level of you know investment from other people to the point where we're just basically living in communities and paying all the utilities, paying all the rent and the mortgages, and just a supply of just, you know, so we're at the point where we have lost so much to where we're, you know, we're too far behind to catch up. And maybe I'm wrong. Um, People, you know, there's a lot more smarter people than me that have this stuff figured out. But I'm a person that look at winning. And for me, the best place to win at is to organize my resources with other black people and for us to do it in Africa. 
Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now you brought up Garby Town. Let's uh, let's talk about Garby Town. And and with that being said, can you build a Garby Town here in America? Oh, we've tried it. It's called Black Wall Street. There's the several <laughs> Black Wall Streets all across America that we've built from the you know from the early uh, 19th century to to even modern day times. Um, and you know, it does get hijacked. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's that fear of the black energy of people coming together and working together and doing what they need to do for themselves. Scare a lot of people. Go where everybody's breadbasket of resources and breadbasket of labor. Um, you know, we're the ones that uh, at the highest percentage in, in, the, in the prison system and the highest uh, people in, you know, doing some of the, the, the worst type of cheap labor. Um, you know, so you know, people talk bad about us, but they're gonna miss us if we ever just disappear tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And and just relocate an African continent. So that's always one of those things where you just you literally see that it you know it has to play out that way. And they're that and then you know the oppressor is, is always gonna take that angle. So we have to take the next angle and just do what we need to do and you know and be like, you know, whatever. And so so Garby Town represents the energy, just like Fiancra in uh, and there's several different um, uh, well, my, organizations out there with land. Go ahead. I was just, no, 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 not, go, 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 not, go. not trying to prop fear or anything up, but that's why land and communities like that is, is you know, is that some of us are, are putting our minds together to have those things available. But at the same time, too, it's up to us as a people to empower it because it's for us. And when we empower it, then we solve a lot of the problems that we have here. And we put ourselves in a situation where we could be here even if we're working. We're relocating our resources. We're getting our homes built, getting our communities built, getting our investment going. Uh, if all of these things were to work like it should work, but you know, we sometimes can be a little dysfunctional. So that's when you know, when people like myself got to get involved in certain things and say, you know, let's let's pull it together as a people because everybody's watching us and everybody is you know also pulling for us to come true. Let's see here. Um... Guys, hit that like button. We have 204 people watching. <laughs> like, and, like, let's hit that like button. Please hit that like button. Now, Bomani, you, you brought up Fihankra. Yeah. I still, I, I'll probably ask you this every time you come on because I, I never from anybody get a straight answer as far as what happened. Yeah. Do you know, like, do you know what happened? Like, have you finally got, like, the information on what happened to the original Fihankra? Yeah, one thing, um, you know, um, it's just mismanagement and an organization when you don't have, you know, you don't have people with us proficient in logistics and operation and, you know, and with a supporting cast, you know, these things happen, unfortunately. I mean, it, you know, but it's still the hope of Africa for us to reconnect uh, as a people is to build some of these communities. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that live in different parts of Ghana and some live closer to each other in you know, more community, but we just have to build, you know, one of these, uh, you know, communities that uh, we can literally just make it self-reliant as possible. So, Based on the things that we have learned from Fianca, um, as far as mismanagement and organization, and trying to implement and connect certain energy with uh, the co-founders of Garvey Town and trying to just you know, get it to where we can just really just move on strong and organize and everything is clear. Uh, and that's one of the things I always tell people when I talk to people about business. Like when I do, when I have my tours, all my stuff is clear from A to Z, from mm -hmm. cancellations from so on to you know, to how to carry yourself. And that's one of the things that we as a people don't practice. So, um, you know, so that's what we're trying to organize stronger in Garvey Town. That way we can take advantage of the opportunity while people are feeling the energy and people are trying to get away from here. Because uh, you may, you know, something may turn around. Uh, Cory Booker may become president and next, you know, uh, he makes Black America the, the pride of America. <laughs> but probably not a funny joke or anything, but you know, you know, if you know, maybe I'm crazy, and maybe one of these things may work out one day to where, you know, you know, America straighten up, and people are like, you know, hey man, I'm not messing with you in Africa, man. America is a is a place to, for black people now. Um, <laughs> because of Cory Booker or Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they might they might pull off something that never been pulled off in history. You know what I mean? The oppressed people will get a victory and actually change things in society. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, as we know that these things are not realistic and not going to happen, you know, we have to just put forth in, you know, in this, you know, always just have to take it back to the drawing board and reorganize and reorganize and in my own business and things and the people that have built a network with in Ghana, we have to keep on doing the same thing too. And, you know, and, and 
just keep you know keep it you know keep it moving now Bonnie, if you want to if you want to speak more on uh garbage town and go into details uh, uh go ahead and also too guys uh we'll do a we'll, we'll take a couple calls as well so i'm gonna put my email in the chat room if you want to uh call in and ask um Bomani some questions that's fine but uh go ahead and uh, speak on uh garbage town that's absolutely and, uh, for family family for those who are interested in garbage town i'm just uh giving you the website as i uh, go to a few things and everything is documented on there so it's just a form of preference all of the information for our africa tours and investment uh including uh garvey town investment and tours to ghana uh every may and december and south africa in november you can visit our website at africa for the africans.org and also if you want e email information newsletters or just direct information about garvey town you can send me an email at a f t a 2010 at msn.com and you'll see the uh, email address on the website and if you want to send me a message you'll see the phone number uh, also so once you're on our website um, you will click on the uh, link that say Garvey Town community in Ghana and now once you and I'm gonna summarize all of these different articles you're gonna see so Garvey Town is a 300 acre community and it's located in between Accra and Cape Coast about an hour and a half uh, each way it's located mm. in a district called Gomoa, and this is uh, in Gomoa, Ezekwa. Right. So um, I have a nice site map once you get on the, the website, and then also have a, a GPS link that uh, once you click on it, it give you direct directions there. Now, it is um, literally two miles off the main road. That's the Accra Cape Coast Road or Accra Winneba Road, and literally about uh, seven miles or seven to ten miles uh, to the you know, to the ocean access or to the beach. Uh, so and about a 15, 20 minute uh, drive to the beach depends on which direction you're going. So, you, you know, so you have prime real estate right there in, in a nice, beautiful tropical in the most tropical part of Ghana, which is it's called central region of Ghana. That's where you have Cape Coast and Elmina, you know, the other tropical um, cities there in um, Ghana. Now, as far as our uh, Garvey Town is set up similar to a commune, um, a co-op or a communal or, you know, or, you know, we just call this uh, community, a, I guess. A black power community. Yeah, all those yeah there you go. Black power community. There we go. Yeah, all those things end up being the same thing. It, you know, it's a community. I would shorten the word or explain it long. Uh, so the, the goal is for us to organize our resources to where we can literally build a community together, uh, including the business district. So each individual get their own plot of land um, and they build on their plot and that, and that also the money that's invested in you getting a plot that's also money that's put towards building the roads and other infrastructure in the community so everything um, that's being done recycle back into the community and all of the people that are going to be building the homes are are some of the best of us who have the skills and then the different contractors that sign on to the project uh, so you can literally uh, get a, a one plot of land it's just one plot of land per person and it's a 300 plot uh setup so once the 300 plot is filled up uh, other options are apartments and condos which um i mean for garvey town company to put together that uh that clarity for the investment so people can literally invest in a condo um or apartment just like they do here uh, if they don't want to uh you know if they, they don't want to get a lot and buy their own home so it gives a lot of flexibility and also all of the business that you have are just business that will keep us self, uh, self-sufficient and business where we're recycling our resource to where we can invest in more things like, um, you know, factories and hardcore infrastructure, sewer system, water system, power system. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, going back to this corporate of economics, us putting our energy together. Uh, so the initial set of people um, from the Garvey Town Company, which are, they're all, uh, from the uk black brothers and sisters just like uh, you and i they put up the initial investment so that's why they have things set up and they have the rules and they have you know certain things that just deal with righteousness because it's an energy and a community organized for us based on righteousness looking to have the best of our people come together to where you know even in a situation where there's a big district area for schools from basic school all the way up to technical and you know and um university type of school setup where People like myself and other people who have you know, certain skills and talents are the ones that are educating our children and how to actually 
build and maintain a community and so you know a, a nation uh, so all of these things that us put in the place to where it work now everything else you have is this uh, list of videos uh, and list of pictures as far as a, a facebook group page and uh the youtube uh, video uh, gallery and all that is a set for where everyone can that's interested can just listen to the videos jot questions down and i can just directly talk with them and ultimately, this is a setup for our three to five year game plan as far as those of us who are looking to you know, be in Africa in the next five years. It gives us an opportunity where we can work here and have my business partner and other people on the ground. We can, we can get a lot of the business, like the homes built and things in place while you're here and while you go back and forth with the highest level of trust. And it's just something I had to put together based on the fact that I've seen so many people go through land drama. So I literally felt like I found the best set of uh, black people as far as having all of the legal stuff in place and all of the, the things in place to where it make this a, a community we can i can come in and kind of work with them and build up and con connect some of my uh, other folks that have that same interest now so there's a full process of applications uh you have to submit a few different documents uh once you scroll down to the to, to the list of documents you're going to see a getting started link it's going to talk about background checks so Every individual that's coming have to provide a nationwide um, nationwide um, background check or a national criminal uh, background check. Uh, mm -hmm. So all of those things are set to where you know we just want to make sure that uh, people can, you know people are open to this submitting these uh, documents, uh, being ready to go, and at the same time too, we don't want people just to just meet us today and just send us all kind of things. You know you know once everyone kind of follow the process and follow what's going on. You know, they'll see we're more connected than anything else, and they'll see that this is something that's direct, directly built for us as a people. Because um, a lot of times we don't see so much going on in the world, and then you know, then everybody's doing this for their their folks and for each other. And then it's like, what about us? So everything that I'm personally dedicated is, is for us to connect together and do for us. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat room. Please hit that like button. We have 211 people watching, on 112 likes. Uh, Blaine, Celeste, Dinas, please do a show on how Africans of the diaspora can use echo currency. When I go find somebody who could really go in depth in regards to the new echo uh, currency, that's actually going to be rolled out next year. Uh, yeah. So that means um, that be a, that means two years from now. That that that's going to be that's going to be interesting because I mean it's I wonder. <sighs> I wonder how the what the rates going to be. I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. If it's going to be one to one with the dollar, because you know, like the the SETI and the uh, Seifa and the Naira are all different. So I'm trying to figure out how what the the Echo, how that's going to be. Um, it's probably not that much different from the in regard to the do U.S. dollar. Yes, yeah, probably not that dollar. Different from the Seifa. Other than the fact that uh, it's um, it's more of an African-based currency versus something that the French people set up for their francophone countries, um, francophone um, colonies. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks are excited, man. But uh, you know, a lot of time, folks are getting ahead of themselves, man. Um, I advise people first get a passport, to get a visas, and things like that. And right, 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 right. Yeah. What's going on? On African continent, um, and you know, we're always going to be just hearing things on the news and things like that. Uh, but at the same time, to you know, let's get to these different countries and show that uh, we have interest because us going to different countries make a world of a difference. You know, that's one of the reasons why citizenship in Ghana has been passed around and being offered in certain things. Uh, so okay, now is it being offered or like what? What's you know? Um, it's you know, you can people can apply for citizenship, but you have to qualify. So. Anybody can apply, but um, they're going to turn a lot of people down because you have to meet the requirements. Some of the requirements is you have to physically live in the country uh, anywhere from between five to 10 years. Some of those things may be adjusted, but, you know, it's there's a few different things that would disqualify the majority of people applying for it. But nevertheless, the good thing is that that communication and that process is open and some people are getting it. So some people may say oh, they only gave 200 people. I mean, it's, it's, it's what it is. I remember the first time it was like 30 something people. And I remember before that, it was like one or two people. Uh, so, um, you know, it's a process of showing something is happening, but it's like at the same time, too, none of us should be here watching what's going on. Um, the more we get involved, the more things change. The more we put our money together and do certain things, the more things change. Because um, the Africans on the continent and uh, the Ghanaians in Ghana are, you know, they're, they're watching and they're looking at these things. 
Uh, so just like if they see majority of us come with our American attitude and act like we're better than them, that's going to be an issue they're going to be talking about. And if more of us come humbly and looking to connect, you know, they're going to appreciate that more. So it's all about our approach a lot of times. Somebody said the value of the new currency will be established by the U.S. Treasury Department. <laughs> <laughs> no. More than likely, absolutely. I hope not. And and and, and then you know, again, people keep bringing it up in the chat room. You know, what's the purpose of going to Africa if the West is going to continue to meddle in African affairs? Hey, um, it's it's not all the same thing. I mean, you're in a different society. Number one, even situations where you're in Ghana and you just run down the street and a group of police officers are harassing you. Whooping your ass, yeah, for being black, exactly. Because, you know, I've seen some situations I'm not even really talking to that, but what they'll do is that, you know, it's quickly for them to leave you alone and stuff like that. Here, you know what I'm saying? Here, you ain't paying no police off. They'll beat your ass down. <laughs> you know? Right. And, you know, even, you know, it's probably like a terrible comparison, but the level of humanity and things like that and... And you know you've seen situations where someone is communicating with a police officer and they're like going back and forth. Here you say one word, you know what I'm saying? They they, they get threatened the next thing they're slamming you up on down the, the car door and you know all kind of right. to deal with. And it's it's a level of humanity still in the country, but at the same time too, yeah, people people don't want to see that same dictatorship government system uh, in place, and people we don't want to see the African continent be more self reliant. But at the same time too, if we're here just playing around in the stands and just watching what's going on. You know, they got, you know, folks got to do what they have to do. And sometimes you have to make a devil deal with the devil to, you know, so you could, your people could eat for another day. Um, and, you know, and that's why I always say that, you know, us, you know, we can look at it however we want to look at it, but you know, we got to get in the game. And that's why I spent the last 15 years on the African continent. Uh, probably not, probably I had not accomplished a whole lot compared to how people want to judge you nowadays. But they have taken over 400 people to the continent and a um, small percentage of those people are living there, are planning on living. And a good amount, and some of us are planning on, on working together and organizing ourselves to do, you know, to do things together and you know, to, to work together as a people and survive together as a folks. Because you get to the point here where survival is difficult and rough to where, example, you live in New York City and it's like, you know, for the same size space here, uh, twenty eight hundred dollars, twenty eight hundred dollars. Exactly. So that's like literally. That. No, that's four times. <laughs> four no, no, times. No, how, many, how many bedrooms do you have? Uh, two bedroom, one um, bathroom, um, townhouse. You have two bedroom, one bathroom. You said. Yeah, a small house. Small. Okay, so in New York right now, like in Harlem, Manhattan, like Harlem, Brooklyn, Bronx, that's that's three thousand dollars minimum. Yeah, and, and down here in, 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 in uh, outside of Atlanta, you can get uh, you know something one of those units anywhere from seven hundred to a thousand. So literally, like you said, the three to four times the amount. And um, at the same time, too, a lot of times people think that you're making a lot more money in these uh, you know these, these cities. You know, so and so I've always looked at it you know as a way of just New York trying to drive up the real estate. Uh, so they can just get these prime rich folks there and and it just becomes all about that but it's like i tell folks that you know people like myself i represent the folks that you know what i'm saying where you know you know we're always considered the have nots we weren't born with much of anything we just grew up fighting and trying to build what we need to build and we realize that at the end of the day if we keep on doing that and putting our money together we will literally have something as a people uh, versus chasing politicians to do things for us and trying to you know trying to live beyond our means by living in rich cities like I personally live here in the South here, Jonesboro. I've always, you know, once I once I escaped from New York uh, in uh, 1996. Mm -hmm. Oh, I never wanted to live back in one of these, uh, you know, so-called urban cities where you just like you you you're trapped in and everything is overpriced and you don't have the best access to do certain things. Mm. Uh, shout out to uh, Nadu for the super chat and shout out to Chief Drano for the super chat. Uh, he says the world map behind Bomani is wrong right, okay all right chief trying i know africa is supposed to be uh, uh is not the correct size i guess that's what he means uh savagery go ahead brother you're on yeah the map is never the right size until we get our ass until we get some space shuttles and some satellites right. and start mapping out the globe mm -hmm. we'll go, ahead, go, go ahead go ahead savagery you're on yo what's up so quick question, is the topic, can I talk about anything or it got to be pertaining to uh, the topic? Pertaining to the topic, man. Let, let's, let's keep it, I mean, what's your question? Okay. 
Hmm. You know what? I actually let me think about it. Y'all can go ahead. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, all right. I uh, you know, one of the things you could talk about uh, is just all of the you know the, you hear about all of this, the the tourist incidents from everywhere outside of Africa. You know, like I was right. in Ghana and I was I was in I was in Ghana for two weeks with a group, and then a week later um, I stayed a week uh, with a few friends and you know we did some business and some social gatherings and some other things, um, documentation and so on. And you know we was out all the time, and it's just. It's just a beautiful, peaceful country. Two things do happen there, but it's like telling folks, man, they don't know what they're missing, man. And um, the only bad set of things, uh, I mean, and one folks uh, hear me out that I'm not trying to blame Nigerians for, you know, for anything there in God. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, at the same time, you know, just like, uh, you know, other places, uh, you know, you know, you have people close by you and they, you know, move some, they come over and they bring some of their bad stuff. But at the same time too, what I've seen happen in, um, in Ghana is that, you know, a lot of good Nigerian energy as far as business and investment, you know, so, you know, you're going to have, you know, when, you know, you're going to have a little bit of things going on and things have changed because people are going to say Ghana was very peaceful and they're hearing certain things and a little bit of stuff that you're hearing is not as bad. Um, you know, you know, it's not as bad. And as far as us, as a people from the diaspora, um, you know, um, beyond just like the real estate um, scams and overprices and things like that, you're, li you're literally, you know, you're literally good. But I tell people a lot of times too, people do stupid stuff and are not exactly street smart in their decisions to do business. And, you know, and sometimes people, you know, so a lot of the, the issues that people have had in the past is because they've not approached the culture of where you do business in our country properly. And in that in case, you can get victimized, um, and you know it could happen to people from that country. But uh, beyond that, uh, I'd like never really have much bad things or anything to say about just being in Ghana for the last uh, twelve and a half years. And so, you know, so folks, uh, I didn't hear no incidents of any couples disappearing or anything. And so all that stuff that right. got curvy, that's just ridiculous, man. You know, you got to be in a country where your own people are gonna look out for you, and uh, you know. And, you know, and it's just, you know, it's, you know, so not trying to put down any of these Spanish speaking countries, but family, keep away from some of these Spanish speaking Portuguese countries. <laughs> and come, <laughs> if you want to be safer, come with me and my crew. We have, you know, we have security, you know, we have, you know, and, you know, you know, we have a force of folks that's going to look out for you, you know, all the time to where people literally get on jet planes and they go to Ghana by themselves after they travel with me and connect with our folks. And everybody, people remember them, and they're good. Shout out to uh, the Duke for the super chat again. Uh, she says, "Where what did Caricom do for bar, for the Bajans when the colonizers stole their lands?" And then let's see here. Then we got uh, brother Ya Akra Akan Bomani, the tourism minister in Ghana, put out a call for Ghanaian diasporans. To return home, and generally, they're bashing her on social media. What would somebody bashing the Ghanaian um, minister of tourism? Yeah. Wow. Maybe I didn't see that video. I mean, what could it be saying about her? She's just trying to market her country. Hmm. And then somebody said, Wodi Maya says Ghana authorities doesn't treat him good. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry that those things happen to him, but at the same time, too, when you put yourself out there, people are gonna people are gonna People are gonna approach you, and you know, and I'm one of the pers person that I've had peace and love, you know, wherever I travel to. But you know, you have to know how to carry yourself. And some people, have, their mouth is too big. You know, I'm not trying to say anything about the brother and stuff, but you know, um, you know, you do, you know, you have to just be careful about doing things to irritate people. I know you can't please everybody, um, and and so on. But you know, it may be one of those personal situations sometimes that you know people may have with him or. Mm -hmm. But I love Ghana. What happened? What happened? To him in, what happened to him in Ghana? I, I don't know. You, you, you just read me a comment or something. Say so he say um, uh, he said uh, the Ghana authorities don't treat him proper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but then again, uh, um, he's he's always doing something to get arrested somewhere or something. But not saying yeah, 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 he is always getting arrested somewhere. That's weird. He, he's controversial, you know. <laughs> It's controversial. When you're controversial, you're going to 
you're gonna get into issues. People that must but he's not that controversial. Like that's all. I, I don't. He's not controversial at all. But he's always getting arrested. Yeah. So you got to be doing something when you go to these countries. People like myself, I just fly on. You know, I, fly, I just do my best to fly on the radar, other than my usual antics to do marketing to get people to come to, to Africa with me. <laughs> all right. But uh. Uh, Metu Judah wants to know who controls the manufacturing industries in Ghana. Do you know? I can, I can you know, definitely Ghanaians to a point. Um, but uh, if you're talking about other folks, Asians and, uh, you know, Lebanese and. Lebanese, yeah, Lebanese. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who are the, the popular international traders of the world, you're going to see them everywhere in Jamaica, Ghana, wherever you go. They're, you know, in, they're, even if it's a union of them, they, they're, they always look at those businesses as big business and they can make it work. Like when I was walking around uh, East Lagoon, um, our, our, our neighborhood that we stay in, I saw a representation from almost every single nation. You know, I saw Turks, you saw, you know, you saw folks from you know, Lebanese you know, from their restaurants to their business, all set up in this you know, wonderful neighborhood. Uh, even though the neighborhood is predominantly uh, African-owned business, but you just see their mark of just trying to set up what they need to set up because they realize it's a great opportunity and what better people to exploit than you know. You know, than a continent that's been colonized and exploited, you know, you know, you know, for hundreds of years and plus thousands of years. So, you know, we have to see the same value that you know that yeah, the Lebanese, the the Chinese, the these, the Indians, whoever they're gonna, you know, if something is good, people are gonna want to get in, and, and you know, uh, so it's just we gotta see the fact that just because they're coming in, that is not a trap. That we just need to come in stronger and you know, and 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 catch up. And that's why I'm saying communities like Garvey Town, Fiancra, and uh, there's a, a there's a Panafis, um community uh, that's uh, there in uh, Cape Coast, uh, not too far from where One Africa is. And oh, really? I didn't I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, a bunch of people organized. You know, ever since the uh, 29 year, 2019 year of return, a lot of chiefs in Ghana they're like they got to get in on this, you know, because at the same time, too, people may say what they want to say, but it's like a lot of, a lot of our folks feel bad that the situation happened, and even. Right. You know, and right, rightfully, rightfully so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you know our, our our folks. You know, you know we you know also about how we always have these sellouts that's willing to sell all of us away. Uh, yeah. So we always sell people that is you know was in the minority of us, even though they just exploded to this the worst way. But uh, they want to do the best they can do, and a lot of them don't have much to offer. Uh, so they're, they're offering land, and I just feel like that's that's you know, and you know, in a, in a situation where you don't have to put much down. Like even in Garvey Town, by the time we give people the prices, you know, it's just to cover certain things because you, know, you can't just give anything away for free. What you guys are offering at Garvey Town, as far as the price, it's not. I mean, it's reasonable. Yeah, that's based on that's that's what we consider free land. That's as close as free as possible because you have to pay. You know, like everybody is working on it, and people have to be paid, and the family that the land is given to, you know, they don't want to just give you the land and you come up and you just and then because I've seen that too. I've seen where land is being given and then. Our folks from America build up the nice community, and everybody around them is poor. And you know we can't, we can't do that. You know we have to we all have to rise together. So um, the money for the land and stuff like that, I also people that is for paying and for the people there that's handling business to reinvest. But at the same time, it just it's it's a level of those resources being reinvested with us. Uh, so family, as long as you don't have to pay no no more than two three thousand dollars altogether for the land and everything. Consider that free. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I mean, for two, two to three thousand dollars for a plot. And how far from the beach is it? Um, you're looking at about seven to ten miles, about uh, twenty, about fifteen, twenty minute drive. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's not bad at all. What what all is in the area? Like what all? Uh the West Hill Mall, the biggest mall in West Africa. That's about fifteen minutes from there. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. So the 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 Okay, I'm, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking. So are you? Because that West Hill Mall is in Accra, isn't it? Or was considered Accra? Yeah, I mean that's outside of Accra. So if you go down about another thirty minutes, that's Garvey Town. I mean, so McCarthy Hill, all these other fancy. Yeah, McCarthy Hill. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, West Hill Mall is by McCarthy Hills. Yeah, Croco Beach, uh, Bojo Beach, all of that is like because what? Oh, what we, yeah, 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 yeah. It took a drive. It was like 15, 20 minutes at most, and we were right there. You know, so I was explaining to everybody. I was like. You see the difference. The development stops in between where Garvey Town is, a few miles out of it. So the, that road will be expanded to two roads on each side, 
uh, two two lanes on each side, it, and then all of that, all of the, you know the empty real estate will be filled up with homes and business outside that that area, and also in the community. So when you're doing these projects, you have to look at the future. You have to look at five to ten years from now. It's like when, right, exactly. It's like West Hill Mall. I literally remember when that mall wasn't there, and I literally remember coming back and the mall was there. Right. And the same so, thing with the Accra Mall. So, you, so you're saying Garvey Town is 15 minutes from Bojo Beach? Um, probably about 20 minutes from Bojo Beach. West Hill Mall, Bojo Beach, all that area. It's literally in, anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes. So it's that close. Okay, well, that's not that bad. Yeah, you're right there. So just like when we're ready to go to the beach, we just all get pack up in our van or bus, and then we just go hang out at Bojo Beach or have some folks that uh, – that, um, at um, Koke Bite, um, they have a resort. We just go to hang out in resorts. We can throw different gatherings and things. You know, when we, when we hit the jackpot, you know, maybe you know, I hit the jackpot and have me a yacht out there or something. You know I mean, oh, and enjoy uh, enjoy boat rides at, at nighttime. I mean, I just look at the future and I look at what you can realistically do as Black people by putting your money together. And I look at and I look at what we try to do here and what we go through here, um, and I just realize that you know everybody have a right to make the decision to either go back and forth or move or look forward to Africa or just stay here, you know? So, but uh, the best thing I always recommend to folks is that, you know, you have to really survey the options. You can't really just be here all your life and then talk down about Africa. And I'm telling people I've been to six continents and my best time in my life has been this across African continent, you know, mainly just in Ghana. Ethiopia is not a great journey. Uh, even when I went to South Africa back in the days, 2005, um, you know, that was a, you know incredible journey. I mean, there's just no comparison. But I, I mean, I've been to, you know, I've been to some of these Europe, some of these uh, countries. I've been to, uh, I've been to Singapore, Malaysia, incredible, beautiful, clean country, no comparison. And then people may say, how are you gonna, how are you gonna say that and compare to a little bit of dirt roads here and open sewers and things? But it's like, you know, when you when you can look past one or two little flaws that you know that the European oppressive colonization system set up, which is laid out bad infrastructure that you got to eventually fix in the future. You know, you can look past that, but when you look at humanity and look at, you know, situations where you see two people arguing and no one is going to throw a blow, they argue for an hour. Right. And that's not happening here. You say one word, I say one word, and somebody hitting somebody. Right. And then, gun, and then guns are being drawn. Yeah. And then even when I go out to the nightlife, I, 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 there's a few places I went to, like, were literally holes in the wall. Mm hmm and you know me and my crew there we had a great time and no fight no drama no issues and you know and plus the drinks are cheap <laughs> very cheap <laughs> compared you know like I, i've been in england where you go to the bar and you're out with your friends and you're like you, you compare the money to the america the money in america is like everything is like ridiculously overpriced i like being at the, the most expensive club here and then a little bit more you know so and it, so and you know and Everything you know in European countries is just literally overpriced, and, and you know, same thing in America. And you go to a country like Ghana, you have humanity, you have mango trees, banana trees, you have fruits and vegetables out there. You have, and the be best benefit is we have the best weather in all them countries that I named. Uh, you know, since we've been talking, almost perfect weather. Yeah. Mm, let's see what else we got here in the uh, in the uh, chat room. But everyone, again, thank you for joining. Make sure we have 282 people watching, only 147 likes. Guys, hit that like button as you come into the uh, in the chat room. Uh, someone was asking how much for uh, a plot of land in Garvey Town. You said about two to three k. Don't no, don't quote me on that, but I uh, um I give the basic price. Uh, it's six hundred and forty dollars for seventy by one hundred, and then it's two hundred and twenty dollars to clear the land and set up your pillars. And then it's a three hundred dollar administration fee from my office to represent you and take care of everything for you, um, and make sure everything work out for you, and then and keep you keep you posted, updated on all that good stuff, and provide you just the direct support that you need to make sure people don't you know you don't have to deal with no drama. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but to add it up, um, you know, not much, and I'll just add it up real quick: twenty plus three hundred plus six forty. One thousand one hundred and sixty dollars, and so that's the base. Uh, or a plot of land in Ghana. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, I mean, Bomani. That's. I think. I think you charge it too less, uh, Bomani. Yeah, it's not my prices. It's just the price. Uh, only thing we add is administration costs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I tell people every business I do, I have you know my, for my technical business. So oh, also, yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta be paid for your time. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I make a living off administrative costs. So 
Uh, that's why I've spent a lot of money designing this high tech office and I get everything done here. I get more done than five people at any business office. Yeah. And think about it, man. I, okay, so once you buy the land, do you have a certain period of time to build or how does it work? Oh, yes, you have to build within uh, five years. Okay. Uh, and, and then I mean, uh, yeah, make it livable to where you can live in it um, at the, at least at the five year mark. So, good five okay, years. what happens if you don't build after five years? You, have, you forfeit the land or how does it work? No, if you completely just don't build, what we can always do is just put you on another, you know, as a we're working on one to one on plot number one to 100 right now. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do is for those who just literally not ready because, you know, we do understand the situation uh, and other people may be ready to build. So we, just, we basically swap them out. Mm -hmm. like I have a situation where I have a sister that's ready to build and I end up just end up swapping her out and putting her in a plot closer to where the land is already cleared. And we're so she can start uh, getting things going. So, you know, one of the things you're doing, you're just trying your best to be humane as possible and look out for people and everything's not about how much money you can give me. And, you know, and, and at the end of the day, I tell people that's how I survive in business, being honest with people from day one and letting people know upfront about everything and not hiding anything or playing games. And, you know, and you you won't make the bigger part of money in that business, but at least you'll be, you will stay in business and you get consistent uh, customers and, you know, and you'll, you'll build more of a love for what you, people, People more love you for what you do doing versus looking at you as just, well, that person's all about business and money because I've heard people talk about some people. I'm like, man, that's terrible how they look at them. But at the same time, too, that's how they market themselves, that they're all about money and all about this. You know, um, and, you know, like you know, sometimes people want to talk to people. I tell people, you can call me anytime. You know, there's no cost to call me. And if you want to ask me about business or anything I can share, you know, you know, I've, you know I do business service and consultation, stuff like that. But it doesn't have to even always be like that. Let's talk and connect as a people, especially if we try to do the same thing. And us being successful is going to help the rest of us. I'm not sure people ever look at it like that. It's like my tour and technology business. I'm always trying to give insights and trying to get more people in that business, especially technology. It's the world of this advanced to where, you know, you, you know, you can just be in your mother's basement and then build up a technology enterprise. Now, uh, as far as the, now, God is a little bit different. It's a 50-year or 99-year lease. I, I don't know which one. Can you explain as far as how ownership works on Garvey Town? Yeah, it's uh, set. Um, the, the arrangements and agreements are a little bit different, but it's still set for us as a 99-year lease. But uh, typically, uh, if you're a Ghanaian citizen, um, 99 years is what you get. And if you're a foreigner or if you don't have a Ghanaian citizen, it's 50 years. So that's the standard. This agreement, uh, Garvey Town is a little bit different, but uh, after just going through the agreement over and over, everything on there to say 99 years. So that's what was agreed with by both parties and the people who signed off on it that actually owned the land and the family and the legal representation from the courts. So is it owned by a Ghanaian family? Oh, yes, yeah, owned by a Ghanaian family. You know, you know, okay. Ghanaians don't play around with their land. Well, can't say all of them. Um, mm -hmm. Some are giving it away to all kind of folks who shouldn't be getting land. Um, yeah, but um, um, yes, it's, uh, and and the deal is a good deal because um, Garvey Town has to build a medical center. Anything that's being built is for the people locally. Also, um, I did you know we did talk about it's it's African diaspora community, meaning that the majority of the plots has to be sold to people from the African diaspora. You know, which only makes sense because there's so much other developments that different Ghanaians are doing around Ghana that would suit many Ghanaians. But it's to help as much of us as possible to go there. And then um, there are going to be certain parts, not certain parts, but there's going to be uh, inf there's going to be additional parts of the property open for Ghanaians. And they're not going to be like isolated anywhere separate. But um, that's not explained to me all the way. And there's also condos and apartment investments. So the site map more so show the plots of land for the homes because that's what you're pushing. Um, but there's other things that you're trying to work out. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a full fledged community. And one, two generations from now, you're, you know, everyone is all African citizens. Uh, and you know we're back to simplicity. Now, after the ninety-nine year lease is up, what what happens? It's automatically a renew a renewable lease. So what you see in the paperwork is a ninety-nine year. Okay. Renew, okay. Unless some you know unless there's issues or something that needs to be addressed, but um, now now after the okay so say after year twenty uh in the 99 year lease i want to sell my home on the land mm -hmm. how does that work uh, perfect the person um would have to fill out you know they have to apply for membership for garvey town and then 
um, they can they'll be eligible to live on the land. So if you want to sell your land to like an Asian or a white person, it would be like, hell no, that won't happen. It's in the laws. Uh -huh. If you want to sell to another qualified person from the diaspora or, or a Ghanaian, that'll be authorized. Okay. Now, will they now? So if it's a 99 year lease and I sell to somebody at the year 20, is it a 79 year lease for that person that buys or is it automatic 99 year lease? Like, how does it work? That is a great question. Um, that's a great question. The lease should be automatically renewed for that person. Um, and it could be the other way around. So that is one of the things I honestly don't know. But I would definitely put that in one of my Q&A questions when I talk to the Lands Commission folks and when I talk to you know any of my folks from Ghana coming up. So that is an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, because I just, because, you know, obviously if I'm leasing, you know, if I sublease my apartment, and after year, and I have a two-year lease, and I sublease it after year one. Then for the new person, it'll only be a, for a one-year lease. I'll only be able to sublease it for a year, unless I, I renew after the two years. You know, so it's just, yeah. I, just, I don't, I don't understand the whole leasing system. You know, as far as buying land, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, well, on a, on a mortgage here, um, it says like the same thing to ninety-nine year. Um, I have to look at some of these, uh, these, these small writing in the paperwork. But a lot of what goes on in Ghana, even citizenship, is not that much different from America. Because even when I was um, with my family, uh, we moved from Jamaica. Um, I've had to live here for seven years before I was able to apply for citizenship. And once I turned 19, I was able to apply for it after being here for so long. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and then some of the similar things you have to, you have to do uh, and, and paperwork and everything. Um, but, and it's the same thing with the, uh, the real estate, uh, except just Africa as a concept that you try to explain to people that you know people don't own land. The land is there for the people in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But um yeah, so most of yeah, so that's it, man. A lot of the stuff is is very similar, not that much uh, different. Now what about uh so uh shout out to Fafu Malau. She wants to know is there a Jamaican embassy uh consulate in Ghana? I would I would think so. I'll be shocked if there's not. I'm not that I know of, um, but I'm sure they have, they're trying to work that out more since the energy is a little more prominent. Yeah, there has to be. There has to be one there. Just like there's no there's no Nigerian or Ghana embassy in Jamaica, which is always shocking to me because there's no Ghana embassy in Jamaica. Yeah, I, mean, I would at least think it would be a Nigerian embassy because there's a lot of Nigerians that go to Jamaica. Right, right, right. But, it, but there's a Jamaican embassy in Ghana, right? Jamaican embassy in Ghana. It has to be. Um, yeah, you can look it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're true. Uh, and, and that's what I'm saying also, that a lot of the connections that we as a people need to be made has to be forged by us. So for the Ghanaian government to go to different parts of the Caribbean and try to strengthen those relationships and try to encourage the connection. And then eventually, you know, we have to get Ethiopian Airlines to reroute some of the flights, you know, to work from the Caribbean to Africa. Because, you know, when you look at the flow of how flights work, you know, flights work, flights all go to America and or Europe. And then you you don't have much options when you start hitting the South Africa, sorry, the um, South America market of flights that go to Africa. And then you know, right in the Caribbean, there's no flight destination that goes to the African continent. So it's uh, these are all relationships that, uh, you know, we're in the right direction to build in. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you know, it's about time to get that Marcus Garvey Black Star line you know, get them, right, exactly. get them ships to go back and forth as far as cargo, you know, cargo and uh, trade. Uh, so, you know, you know, we can always look at it two different ways, um, you know, but I tell people, you know, you know um, as long as we keep fighting and not giving in, you know, we'll get somewhere. Yeah, it's just us doing all the other things that uh, you know, kind of hold us back. But I see a new future for us as a people, especially that the that connection from the Caribbean to, you know, to Africa, yeah. and yeah. one second, I'm just sending something off. Yes, I see you got your museum background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my artwork. You know, I got a ton of it. So there you go, man. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for when I move to the the, the continent to, 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 to you know to, to, to build back up my stash. I've, you know, I've had to downsize. 
Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, uh, Powerful Bean, do you just want to come on the um, chat? So can you please ask uh, Bomani about structures? Can we import modular homes to the land? Can we import what to the motherland? Modular homes. Oh, modular homes. I got gotcha. you. Oh, absolutely. Al. You just, you know, you just, you know, even your prefab container homes. Uh, just, you know, you can even order it from Alibaba or, or just get it done here or wherever and have it shipped over. Or, you can have a prefab and set up there in Ghana, but I get I get I guess the idea if you get a prefab is you know you want to when you get it there you want to be ready to live it you want to live in it so that's always a great idea. Yeah. And okay. Seen, I've seen some good stuff on YouTube that just you know, turn into a believer. Uh, someone is saying the embassy is in Nigeria, Jamaican. Jamaican embassy. Yeah. So not so that I could understand right there because uh, you know the relationship is a little tighter. Oh, okay. In Jamaica, Nigeria. Okay. All right. So, um, the brothers, Dimitri, I just sent you the link. So, we're waiting on you. Yeah. And then after you come on, we'll go ahead and close out. So, Dimitri Wade, we're, uh, we're waiting on you. I just sent you the link. Right, perfect. And, you know, in Nigeria, yeah. they good stuff for Jamaica. They bring a lot of, over the, a lot of the Christianity over. <laughs> I do a little bit of that, too. So... But everyone, thank you for joining. Make sure you hit that like button too. Uh, Dimitri Wade, we are waiting on you. I sent the link. Click, 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 clack. Yeah. We'll give you one minute, then we'll go ahead and close out. Oh, yeah, Brandon Watt. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Brandon Rock Rogers could build. Can he build those modular homes? Brandon Watt Rogers? You know who Brandon Rogers is, Bomani? Oh, yes, sir. it's an architect that's been there in Ghana. I used to work for the Fianca project. I met him in 2006. And I still know him to this day. I'm trying to get him on the Garvey Town project with us, but he's been tied up with a lot of his own big projects. Uh, mm -hmm. Hoping that you know, we can, you know, he can be one of the people that will help build some of the different homes in Garvey Town. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, uh, good brother, uh, man. And this, as a matter of fact, that's how you, you, you return to the continent. The brother left when he, when he was in university, when he finished university. As an architect and build his career in Ghana, impressive. You, know, so you there? Okay. Yeah, so he can definitely build dome homes and a lot of different uh, homes. Uh, okay. Yeah, pretty. Uh, I I need to. He was actually here in Atlanta not too long ago, but I was out of the country when he came in. I was gone. Yeah, if he's here, man, and uh, folks, you know, folks, so this is, you know, well, I'll be here laying low, but um. You, Use you around. Um, but yeah, if I know he's here, I'll definitely reach out to him. Um, but um, one of the things I explained, one of the things I explained to him is that uh, it's a lot of homes got to be built there. So yeah, but why, why? But why would you import a modular home to Ghana? All right, cool. Dimitri's on. All right, Dimitri, go ahead. Ask your question. So, uh, thank you for giving me a second chance. So basically, I really got a question. I really got more of a statement. So my whole thing was, I actually want to give ADOS a good look because basically the whole purpose of it is to help the brother like how he was talking about building in Africa. Because my whole goal is once the ADOS people in America actually can build an infrastructure and get wealth, we can do like what the Jewish people did and help black people throughout the world with the resources we gain here. Like, I know some ADOS people on that coon show like fuck Africa as a whole. Nah, I ain't on that. I'm basically saying, we can't help Africa if we can't even help ourselves in America. What 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 are, what are your thoughts, um, Bomani? Oh, uh, that's definitely one way of looking at it. Um, uh, but at the same time, too, um, you have to. Um, we can't wait here and try to help ourselves in America because we have had the best resources here in America to do many things with. And a lot of the things that have went wrong is not our fault. We built great communities, and these white devils burn the shit down and bomb us and. You know, and, and destroy what we're working towards and put us against each other. Um, but it, it just, it's time for at least us to give Africa some energy, even if it's 1% energy of what we have here in uh, Black America. Uh, and absolutely, I mean, all these movements and everything, you know, we have to work together as a people. And um, other people are counting on us fighting and, and arguing, having beef with each other and things like that. Uh, so I've told people that I have no issues with anyone I'm willing to do what it takes to work with as much of us as possible so we can 
you know, at the end of the day, you know, we need to build Black America. At the end of the day, we have to build Black Africa. So, you know, Agreed. whoever feel the most strength to work on, whichever, work on it, and whoever can do both, do both. Uh, but at the same time, to um, you know, we just have to just keep on pushing peace, and uh, and you know, to tell people I'm also going to work on be playing nice, uh, so you know, so people can see us really being you know cool and, and, and good with each other and everything about beef and you know and you know and debates and things like that. Well, I'm gonna say this and be done because I ain't gonna keep be long winded. But see, like my whole thing is, don't you think at some point when they see that. Black people leaving to go to Africa and build up there. They're gonna be like, wait a minute, y'all niggas think y'all slick. So let's just burn down the shit y'all build in Africa too. Um, they, those things have always been in place also, but at the same time, too, you literally gotta make a move. You literally can't being here in America is like being a, a you know, we, we, we tell it as a sitting duck. You know what I'm saying? You're a sitting duck for anything that's to happen to you. Um, you you build enough strength in Africa, you're good. Um, and that's the issue. And that's you know, maybe a little scared of folks with people like myself. My life is dedicated until I don't have any more breath, until my, my body falls, to making it work in Africa for us. And, and you know, as you see my shirt, Africa for Africans, been in business for, for you know, almost 13 years. And, you know, it's it's not a lot of us that's willing to do that. So that's why I'm always saying that we need more energy on that. And then, you know, we have enough energy in America. Um, we just have to use the resources properly. Um, and, you know, I saw a committee where you had, you know, you had senators and people in Congress having a communication about reparations and things like that. You know, um, we don't have any kind of representation, not even one, you know, not even one or two of these folks that represent us saying the African continent, let's try to build something and help some of our exactly. exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so definitely, but uh, I'm, I'm with you and, uh, you know, and I feel like, you know, we're at the same situation where we see the need for us to, to take care of well, America or Africa. And it's, it's a situation where uh, we just got to push that there's no beef and no issue with that. And we should all work to do what's best as we see. All right. Thank thank you all, Dinos, for having me on. Y'all two have a good night, okay? Uh, no problem, brother. No, no problem. No problem. Um, shoot, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out. Everyone, thank you for joining. Bomani, anything you want to share in closing? Also, um, you give everybody your contact information and all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely, family. I mean, just... Uh share with you one of our tour t-shirts the family is our website at the bottom africa for the africans.org uh, visit our website and check out all the details for garvey town check out our tours for ghana may and december south africa in november and just uh, reach out if you have any questions you want to talk you want to meet i'm here to connect with you to make sure that uh, we represent you right as far as your reconnection to the african continent and if they're open for investment, we have a lot of investment opportunities. So family, and for those who want to send me a text or WhatsApp uh, or just reach out to me uh, via phone call, uh, it is 404-931-9429. Uh, email address AFTA2010 at msn.com. And then our website here. And then um, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, all of it is under the name of Bomani Tayemba. And then, uh, you know, you'll see me from anyone else with that name because you'll see the African spirit revolution um, when you, you know, connect with us. What well, was it? Africa for the, oh, somebody put in the chat room, Africa for the Africans .org. Okay. That's it. Yeah, cool. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe, family. Hit that notification bell too. Till next time, Dinah Samir, search for Uhuru. Peace. All right, family, take care. No problem. Thank you.